Today, I want to address uh, some regular questions, or I guess sometimes some misconceptions that I see come around in the community on a regular basis. Now, this is going to be my opinion, and I'm going to be answering it based on what I see, what I know, and what I believe. At the same time, I think you know it's it's a good conversation to be having because there is a lot of content out there of people sharing different perspectives, and sometimes it's not necessarily right or wrong. It's just going to be different for different reasons, and I want to try and help you understand all of those perspectives in this episode. What's going on folks? Welcome back to the channel. My name's Chris and I'm building a business that suits my lifestyle. And predominantly that is through my reselling business. Now, as I said, I am gonna be talking about some of my own opinions around three top areas and that is revenue and profit, right? Second area is what about tax and GST? And the third area, which is the average cost of goods. These are the three topics we'll be discussing today. And of course, if you do stick around, I do have some show and tell, and I'll give you some business updates as well for what's been happening of week 135 of doing this full time. Let's dive in. All right, so area number one is revenue. And I agree, revenue is pointless without profit. And I think what's really important to understand is that profit is also pointless if it's not actually at a percentage that actually makes sense. Now, of course, we can all set what that percentage number is. If your profit margin is 10%, 20%, 30%, 100%, obviously it's not gonna be 100%, it's not all can't be pure profit. But the reality is, it's like it's going to be different for everyone based on people's circumstances and their business models. That's the reality of it. But I think we also need to make sure we do understand that there are more than one way people do business. There's more than one way or one style of how we operate. For me, I talk about revenue on a fair bit. I talk about, you know, I'm aiming for 100,000 or 160,000 or 250,000, whatever it may be in terms of a goal, goals perspective. But at the same time, I also understand what my net profit margin is on a monthly basis, you know, what I might be averaging. And I think this is super important. But before I get to that, let's just quickly pull it back. What is revenue? Well, revenue is total income before any expenses, right? So if you earn $100,000, it's $100,000, that's revenue. Now, gross profit is then essentially that income minus cost of goods, right? And then net profit is after all costs. So an example of this would be like, if you have $100, I'm gonna chuck it up on screen. If you have $100 and that item costs you $10, well then the cost of good is $10. Therefore your gross profit is $90 or 90%. Now, after all expenses, let's say postage of $10, fees maybe 15%, so 15 bucks. And then we've got overheads of like postage supplies, rent, travel, all those good things. Sometimes the overheads can be very hard or a little diluted to be able to, you know, turn to a single sale. So in simple terms, I won't be putting all those overhead costs to a single sale. They usually come out in a monthly position because then we're actually able to take what was the total revenue, what was the total expenses, and then what was the total profit. But for simple terms, let's just quickly do the net profit on a single item. So. We've got gross profit less the $10 postage, less the $15 fees, we're left with $65. That's 65% net margin, which is pretty, pretty good. However, if I use my own workings from last month of how I actually landed in terms of a position for a whole month, which was July, 2023, you'll be able to see that my profit and loss statement clearly shows, obviously the total revenue, the gross profit, and then the net profit. So total revenue was around $13,200. Cost of goods sold was $2,405, which left us with a gross profit of $10,793. Now with operating expenses, there was $6,688 going out the door from postage, storage, um, office supplies, laundry work, actual post itself, uh, there was software, there was, um, actually there wasn't any software last time, but um, there was other in car as well, you know, how much it costs to fill up car or the kilometers and things like that. And then fees. So that was quite a lot. And then after that, we get to the operating profit, which is what's left over being $4,105 with a net margin being 31.11%. So as you can see, total expenses or overheads was like 50% of that margin. And my ending net operating profit was around that 31.1%. Now this is just above the lowest that I want it to be. I want to be 30% minimum operating profit. Now, the reason why I approach this way is simply because the way I look at it is if I do $100,000 in revenue, that's $30,000 back into my pocket or profit. $160,000 in revenue, that's $48,000 back into my pocket. 
and so on and so forth. So if I did $250,000, it's about a 75K back into my pocket. That's at 30%. So if I can do 32, 35, 40%, some months you will, you'll fluctuate, you'll have big, bigger and better months, and you'll have sometimes some months which do not go as planned as well. So these are all things we need to take into account. Now, for those that are maybe asking, well, what's a healthy um, you know, profit margin. Well, I just did a quick Google. So this is coming from literally the first Google for Australia is what is a healthy profit margin for a small business? And it says between seven and 10%. Now this is all going to fluctuate. It's going to be different depending on what industry you're in and seven, 10%. That's, that's quite low. Like Jeepers, I would not want to be doing that low, but I think if we were thinking about a brick and mortar store, a retail store, they operate on a very thin margin. And I think this is why we need to understand that operating in the eBay world or e-commerce or online, we actually have the luxury of some things where we don't have expenses that brick and mortars would. So we can potentially always increase our margins a lot easier than a brick and mortar store. Now, again, coming back to, so why do I focus on revenue? Well, it helps me understand and convert my expectations. When I'm purchasing something, what is the likely walk away, take away back into my pocket when doing, you know, a quick little math in my head of like, is this going to be profitable? The other thing is like, there's going to be fluctuations. There's going to be months where I'm able to, you know, get a higher profit margin. You know, sometimes it'll be 40%, 42%. And then sometimes it's going to be at a loss as well. The idea is by the end of the financial year that I'm coming out above that 30%, ideally closer to that 40% is where it would lo I would like it to be. All right, area number two is what about tax and GSTs? Now, firstly, I just want to say that Obviously, I'm not an accountant. This is not financial advice. And you do need to seek your own help when dealing with these kind of things. I want to share what works for me and how it's been working for me. And just my opinion on all this. This is not telling you this is what you should do. But firstly, unless you're operating a company, tax will be, in most cases, an individual tax return, meaning a personal tax return. And in this case, I still operate as a sole trader. Therefore, that everything that I do comes through my single tax return. So I think you need to take that into account because everyone will have different setups. People might have, you know, a partnership. People might have a company. People might be operating as a single sole trader. All these different things, they all take, they all come into account when people do their taxes. Now, at the end of the day, if I cover my tax here, like if I share it on a, you know, every single sale, it doesn't really actually give you the real perspective because since I'm doing a sole tradership and since I'm doing a single individual tax return, the tax that I talk about here isn't actually relevant because I have money coming in from other income streams, whether it's through another business or stock market and things like that. Therefore, it's going to influence my marginal tax rate. Now, if you don't understand the marginal tax rates here in Australia, this is how they operate. Up to the first $18,200, you don't pay tax. After that, it starts to change, right? So if I only make $30,000 from reselling, I'm paying basically 19 cents to the dollar of anything over that. So it's only like $11,800 in tax. But I also need to make sure I consider that I have other business and sales income. I have rental property income. I have stocks and shares income. I have YouTube ad revenue income. And I have other bits and bobs. And that's not even to take into account of offsets, things that lower your taxable income. And these are all part of my personal income tax. So I can say to you, yeah, I had to pay tax on this, but it doesn't actually give you the full picture anyway. And I think this is what we forget when we take into account other people's positions and what they share and how they share it. Sometimes they might be operating as a company. Sometimes they might be operating as a whole different setup to what you are. Therefore, it's going to look different and it's going to end differently. And it's what works for them. So just be careful of what you watch and what you see. It isn't always what you expect it to be. And maybe it doesn't make sense to be shown because it's not relevant to what needs to be shown. Now, I guarantee you, any full-time reseller will have other streams of income coming in somewhere in their life. It might be from a partner. It might be just from other things that they're doing, an investment or things like that. So we do need to take that into account. And also, we, we shouldn't forget the tax deductions, which is why we all pay tax or don't pay tax. It all depends on your circumstance. And it also means that some of us have underpaid tax and some of us have overpaid tax, which is why you'll get some tax back and some tax you have to pay back at the end of a year, right? I hope that makes sense. Now, the next part of this is GST. Well, this one, again, it's different for everyone. You don't pay GST legally, or you don't have to apply for GST legally until you start earning $75,000 in annual revenue through your business in a single financial year. Now, once you declare that to the ATO, that's when you start paying the GST. 
Now there's other things to also consider when dealing with GST because there's GST due. And then there's also GST credits, meaning when you purchase something, what GST did you pay? So that brings down the GST that you have to pay from your sold goods as well. Now, none of this is advice, but it's you need to do your own research. You need to speak to your own accountant. If you need an accountant, Ethan Ruschok is very good in this area. But there's a whole area of this within the ATO that you can look up and understand or speak to your accountant to get a better understanding. So again, GST is never going to be through and through, right? It's going to be different for every business, different for retail. It's going to be different for online reselling. It's going to be different from service-based businesses. And it's not always one thing suits all. So we do need to take that into account. Again, if you're not sure for yourself or how to operate with this in mind, speak to an accountant. Now, area number three that I want to touch today is the average cost of goods. Now, this one has been a conversation I've been having with multiple people over the last few weeks of maybe it's been a bit confusing, but I want to help you understand. It's not confusing. I'm not trying to trick anyone. This is just how I operate. Now, again, everyone operates differently. This is how I operate. There's no right or wrong to this. You do you. And at the end of the day, we will land in the same position. So if I buy a jumper for $15 and I buy a book for $4, seems simple enough. Together, the average cost of good for those two items is $9.50 or a total cost of $19. Now, let's say if I sell the jumper for $40 and after fees and after post and after cost, it means 40 minus $6.50, 15% fees, or let's just say how much the fees are, including promotions and things like that. So $40 minus $6.50 minus $10 minus $15 is $8.50 profit. If I sell the book for $30, this is assuming for the actual cost of the item, $30 minus fees, so $4.50 minus 10, which is postage, minus $4, which is the cost of good, I get $11.50 profit. So together, we're sitting on a $20 profit. Not too bad. Now, if I do this with an average perspective, the jumper, 40 minus $6.50 minus $10 minus $9.50 average cost of good, $14 profit. If I sell the book for 30 minus $4.50 of fees, minus $10 of postage, minus $9.50 of cost of good, $6 profit. I get $20 profit as well. So the only difference is that you'll find is sometimes one item might create an individual loss, but on paper, that's all it is, is a loss. You haven't actually made, made a loss on the item because you knew you bought the item knowing that it's going to bring in the right amount of revenue and the right amount of profit based on its value. Now, sometimes this can get a little diluted and I, I get that it can be confusing, but the reason why I follow it this way is because most of the time I'm buying multiple items. Usually I'm not just walking into a shop and buying two items. Usually it's more, sometimes it is two, but the reality is sometimes I'm buying up to 2000 items and the average cost of good pro process enables my life so much easier when it comes to record keeping. Now, there are periods of times when I won't do this. For instance, there was a time when I purchased a whole bunch of shoes and they were like $100 a pop and then I might've got a single DVD for 50 cents. It doesn't make sense to actually combine those because it dilutes the you know, what I'm trying to track. And I also want to understand is, are these shoes actually profitable at that level? Going forward, if I was to buy a, you know, a pair of shoes for $100 and then I bought 100 DVDs for also $100, I would average it out because there's enough there to make sure that it is averaged out. So there is sometimes where I will change it up and I have to do an, do an out of process process to record that. But most of the time, 95% of the time, I am doing the average cost of goods process. Now, if you're not sure about this, if you don't understand how it works, speak to your accountant of what makes sense for you. For me, my accountant, I've worked with him on doing this. We've actually got a reseller spreadsheet that actually helps track this in an average cost of good perspective as well. If you want to check that out, we do have a live demo. You can go check it out and see all the details here as well. All right, so that's the three areas. If you do have any questions on this, by all means, please do reach out. More than happy to continue the conversation. I can understand where this can be overwhelming, can be confusing, and there's a lot of misconceptions and misunderstandings with it, but do your due diligence, check with your accountant, and you should be fine. That's as simple as it needs to be. All right, so week 135, how have we actually progressed for this week? Well, well, I'm very happy to say I'm back on above average targets, and it's been a couple of weeks where we've been very slow, very quiet. This week, I worked extra hard in getting extra listings up, doing a few different deals to really get that revenue back up to where it needs to be. 
In terms of volume though, still down quite a bit, but the ASP was higher this week. We've sold a lot of clothes, a lot of jeans, and of course you can see all the other stuff that's been selling. I have been trying to move out some of my own personal stuff just to get the cash flow and to boost the business up a little bit, just stuff lying around home. So that's everything that's been selling, as you can see for yourself. Now in terms of some of the top items, some of the cool items that's been selling for this week, four items that I want to take you through. And number one is my first Folio Society book. Now this one was the history of the Arab peoples. Um, I paid $5.42 two cents for this sold it for $113.80 I think this one went to Japan actually and I profited $78.35 after fees and postage uh, the next one is this two-pack urban vinyl Funko Pop uh, this one also paid $5.42 for uh, revenue was $98.80 and this one went to US and after fees and postage that's $65 back into my pocket roughly the next one also an international sale was um a darth maul black adjustable hat now this one i've been sitting on for about a year finally sold it international paid five dollars 42 from it this is using an average cost of good method and revenue was 81 dollars 31 cents after fees and postage profit was about 54 dollars 29 cents and then top item number four for this week which you guys will remember from my video of the retro video games i picked up at savers the other week which was this pokemon yellow version i got it for 17 dollars 48 cents Revenue, 75 bucks, giving me $36.90 after fees and postage. Not too bad. Now, in terms of the whole week, how have we actually progressed for the entirety of the week? So 76 sales, cost of goods was $614 or so, sold $3,104 worth. My goal is to do $3,077, so we're above that. Profit, just shy of $1,500. Bucks, and ASP was $40.86 with an average cycle time of 85 days, which is very quick. And look, this is this. Is, I'm, I'm very happy with this. Very happy with this. Took a little bit of a grind to get back up here. Now it's continued to replicate it and continue to build it from here. Got to push hard, got to work on it. That's all I can do. All right, let's jump into some show and tell of what's been happening in the business. All right, team, it is Monday morning and we're back at it again. And I'm um, going to quickly see how much we've got going out. So we've got a total of 32 items to go out and we're back on 39258 that's been going up about 250 dollars up and down each day so we've got a, a range of different things going out we've got some books this is going international actually which is pretty cool um but a lot of clothing which is obviously 50 percent of my stuff got a few different bundles here some dramel z some um tokyo jungle playstation 3 game this one's gone international <laughs> This one's gone international, so quite a few international sales this week, which is pretty cool. We've got a Polaroid camera going out, some Smurfs, a little hat, some Assassin's Creed been going off a lot this week. And last week, there is a new game coming out later this year. Um, yeah, a lot of jeans, a lot of shirts, been selling a lot of older stock as well. Um, 633, as you can see there, we're up to about 1900 now, so it's good to see some of that older stuff going out, 228, so just clearing out stuff that just needs to move. And as long as I'm making a little bit of profit on it, not too, I don't care too much is what I meant to say. All right, team, let's, um, let's play. Oh, actually there's that jacket as well. Sold this bad boy. So that's pretty cool. Nice little thing. Um, so yeah, let's pack it up. All right, team, all packed up and ready to go. I'm gonna put it into the bag and um, I'm gonna take a couple of photos of some things before I go and then I'm gonna go home and do listings. That's what you do. That's what you do. All right, team, I'll see you either tomorrow or the next day or the next day. You'll find out very soon. All right, team, we are back here on a Wednesday. Just finished up at Backpacks and come here to do a whole bunch of packages because we had about 15 sales yesterday and I've got 21 to go out. So um, we've got 21 to go out, as I said, and we're back down to 38,900. So it is still a bit slower, but look, it's ups and downs at the moment. Take what we can get. We've got some pretty cool items going out. We've got um, two pack going out. He's gone over to USA for $98. We've got a Folio Society book uh, that's gone for a total of 113 to Japan. Uh, this little guy, nothing special. A few other things here, some CD bundles, lots of denim, denim jackets, denim shirts. We've got jeans, 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 a couple of other little things here. And a um, this was the Caroline Morgan corduroy jacket going out too. So it's not, not too bad. Um, yeah, let's, let's pack it up. All right, team, it is. What is today? Today is Thursday. Um, I've actually just caught up with Peter. Um, really do appreciate it, mate. Thanks for swinging by. Um, and just gonna do a quick pick, pack and post. We're on 39,346. 
We've got 11 items going out, a couple of bundles there too. Um, and we're going to get this happening. So we've got uh, Call of Duty Black Ops um, Metal. Call of Duty stuff's been going off pretty well at the moment because the new servers are up and running. So I think a lot of nostalgia hits are coming through. The old servers are up. We've got um, this parts not working modem going out. Red Dwarf bundle, little Thomas. Um, we've got some um, belt buckles that's gone for about two hundred thirteen dollars with one bundle. We've got a couple of shirts going out and a pair, a couple of pair of jeans. So ooh, and little Zelda. So pretty happy with this. I'm going to get this happening, and um, I've also got some Pokemon stuff. Whether that gets sent today or tomorrow for all the winnings from Backpack with Vic Kids. If it's not today, you'll see it tomorrow. Um, but a big thank you to all of you. We had some pretty good winners um, going out, so that was pretty exciting. All right. Let's pick, pack, and post. All right, back again. So here's all the people that have won in last night's fundraiser for Backpack for Big Kids. We're now over $6,000, almost about to hit $7,000. So thank you so much. Um, we had some big bangers going out. Um, I can't actually really show you because they're all kind of packed up already, but um, big shout out to you all. Thank you so much for getting involved. And this money is going straight to Backpack for Big Kids. Um, more details on that to come as we continue to progress through the final weeks. Some pretty cool, fundraising opportunities coming as well. I think we have, you'll hear it here first, we have a switch coming soon. We have a few other things as well. So keep an eye out because I don't want you to miss out. And we also have the main event coming up on the 24th of September where you can purchase some Pokemon cards and we'll opening them up live and having a lot of fun on that main event as well. Appreciate you. And um, I've got all this packed up now. Well, it's all printed. I just got to put the labels on the stickers put the labels on the stickers, put the stickers on the actual, on the actual packages and then I'm um, getting out of here. Appreciate you. All right. Well, there you go. Really do appreciate you being here. If you do have any questions of anything that we've discussed today, more than happy to continue the conversation, chuck a comment down below or ask a question, whatever it may be. Really do appreciate you being here. You have a wonderful day. Cheers.